two, or three, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack to Jack. I don't care if I ever get back home. It's root, root, root for the Cubby. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball. This is the from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. The episode of the Monday Morning Quarterback, an extended episode on the uh, 20th of January, 2020. We decided to extend this. We wanted to get in the final uh, outcome of the protests in Richmond, Virginia. Those protests did go on. People marched outside of the fence. They did not enter the fence with uh, firearms because there were metal detectors there, etc. Dr. King Day, as it is nationally celebrated, is lobbying day in uh, Virginia. And many of the uh, legislative types were there. Uh, One from Manassas, a socialist was not there because his life had been threatened on social media. But right-wing groups, militias, etc. did in fact uh, march around the fence. That's all they could do. They had uh, weapons with them. And they, the outcry was against the uh, new laws that are being debated in the Virginia legislature. Basically, these laws would be... Uh, some red flag laws to take away uh, guns from people that would harm themselves or other people or that uh, temporarily. That's what's called a red flag law. And also to expand uh, background checks uh, to people that buy from a neighbor, and one bill would do, and also at gun shows, etc. And the argument the right-wingers have put forth is that that would erode their gun rights, as they now call them, the Second Amendment rights they used to call them. But if you look at the history, the last hundred years, one woman was saying that uh, they had been eroded. That is incorrect. What has happened, as the late, great Jerry Pippen uh, reminded us, that when we had uh, Tombstone and various uh, western cities, if people did carry sidearms, uh, rifles, but they were checked at in the town marshal's office. And that basically went on until the uh, new uh, legislation about uh, gun permits uh, proliferated. There was always reason that people that carried money, etc., could get a gun permit from a local uh, law enforcement uh, type. Usually the... Uh, county sheriff or the local police department, but very few of those were granted. And then came the uh, proliferation, <coughs> excuse me, the proliferation of uh, gun permits, the commits, permits to conceal and carry, <coughs> excuse me, which has nothing to do with the uh, firearm permits. Those are a, uh, a separate um, matter, I should say, for long guns. Long guns uh, are registered at the time that you purchase the gun as a waiting period in most states, not all. And you're allowed to uh, purchase the gun and, of course, take firearm uh, training. The same as uh, conceal and carry. But it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a federal background check that people go for AKR uh, 47s, etc. Uh, types of... Uh, semi-automatic rifles, uh, period. But now for normal um, handguns, uh, that is a a different... There is a uh, waiting period in most states and municipalities uh, to get one. Uh, But what Virginia would want to do is just limit the uh, uh, right to buy a gun for one per month. You can still buy 12 uh, per year. 
and most people before the law goes into effect obviously would have purchased a number of guns that they already have so it would have a minimal effect on people of that nature and adding one uh, survey uh, that uh, in the metropolitan area that's around Washington DC those counties Prince George etc roughly about 10 percent of the people have uh, concealed and carry permits and if you go into greater uh, Virginia Shenandoah Valley etc the Appalachian pots it's about 25 percent of people that have these and still it's not 50 percent 25 percent is not uh, extraordinary for rural areas so if you go across the uh, U.S. as such you get into sparsely populated uh, states where people have always had long guns and uh, states uh, like Texas where you can conceal and carry not only what you can carry in uh, Texas you can carry a uh, a, a 9 millimeter on your side as long as it's displayed uh, there you can have the concealed uh, a permit in uh, some states uh, there is no permitting uh, process you can just carry the gun period as long as you can get the gun purchased you can carry the gun so it varies throughout the country as to uh, what is going on so this is a relatively newer devel- development the uh, last uh, 15 years or so and the proliferation is out there because of mass murders in the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach, etc. That is the reason for this legislation. Democrats ran on it and were elected uh, to the House of Delegates, etc. And they now control both branches along with Governor Norfolk. If you recall, Governor Norfolk uh, appeared in his uh, yearbook, uh, medical school yearbook, uh, in uh, blackface. That has been uh, forgotten. And we don't hear anything of uh, Fairfax, that's the lieutenant governor. He had uh, been accused of uh, a sexual assault. Uh, That never went anywhere. So voters have basically very short uh, memories as to what happens, uh, period. So that is the end of that. We did not see a reoccurrence of the types of activities that happened in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. That is the home of the University of Virginia, and of course, Larry Sabato's crystal ball. And we always honor and remember Heather Heyer, who was murdered there by white supremacists. Many of these groups uh, came to Richmond, but the mixed result, they did not go into the state capitol grounds. That will end uh, tomorrow. At least the uh, ban and the fences will come down, etc. And these groups, uh, caravans of groups, uh, have now returned to wherever they came from. If we uh, take the uh, maximum uh, laid down by D.J. Trump on members of the squad. In fact, Iman uh, Omar, Ihan Omar, is using that as uh, her campaign slogan to return her to where she came from, Washington, D.C., running for re-election, and no doubt she will be re-elected uh, there. We have a... Uh, outbreak in uh, China of a uh, pneumonia type uh, virus similar to SARS but not SARS but is now being passed human to human and people are preparing uh, in all of uh, the area generically called Asia for the Lunar New Year so you uh, have uh, billions of people traveling whereas uh, in uh, the western countries during the Thanksgiving, uh, particularly North America, Christmas holiday uh, deal you had uh, with roughly 160 million people traveling that whole pit and in England, etc. But this is a big holiday. This just shows what the rest of the world is doing compared to a small uh, uh, portion of it. In the Swiss Alps, uh, the Davos uh, World Economic Forum is going on, and on Tuesday, uh, DJ Trump uh, will be addressing uh, the gathering there, and the big topic this year there is climate change, and how uh, climate politics will be handled. Uh, Primarily, it'll move from Greta uh, Thorberg, who will be there, 
uh, speaking uh, in addition to DJ Trump. Uh, our audience will obviously be bigger. But they'll be talking about how governments, particularly central banks, will start to handle uh, climate change. It will be factored into all the models. Things have uh, changed, and that will change the mode of manufacturing. For instance, many countries are shipping uh, products, or uh, uh, getting products, uh, partially finished and finished, from many of these countries, uh, like Vietnam, etc., that are causing uh, extra pollution with the fossil fuels and that is that it would happen with China. China is trying to cut back on fossil fuels so less manufacturing means uh, less soot and uh, dark clouds in the community. I can recall uh, my first visit to uh, Chicago and the south side it was dirty. Same thing with a visit to Pittsburgh. It was dirty. So when the steel mills uh, closed, Gary could be in there, Indiana uh, the uh, place started to uh, clear up. That started in the uh, late 70s and then in the 80s. And of course, but now those areas, the steel mills have been closed. They've been many of those areas, those steel mills have not only been closed, torn down, and now there are uh, flats and condos, etc. And in other words, new neighborhoods have appeared there, and the means of production in those neighborhoods are totally different than they were. People are not making steel there. Blast furnaces are not blasting, uh, period. So the changes in the entire economy changes the political system. Now, how this will uh, turn out, it will uh, make the Green New Deal, which many laughed at uh, as a uh, laughingstock matter, uh, front and center, period. That is a broad uh, roadmap not legislation at this time, but this makes Bernie Sanders uh, much more relevant and the Green New Deal, the squad, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Iman Iman Omaya, and uh, Rikita Shideg out of uh, Detroit. So we are seeing uh, changes, some incremental, some will be changes that have moved on the international scene. So Greta uh, Greta, uh, Toberg is outside of the uh, Swedish uh, parliament alone most of the time and then joined by a few uh, chums. Started a movement that attracted millions of people uh, marching across this world for climate change. It's no longer a joke. The climate deniers have been put in their place back into the slimy rocks that they crawled out from beneath them. And things like the massive fires in Australia, where they'd be outside of uh, Canberra, uh, uh, or outside of uh, Sydney, or in uh, southern Australia, etc. Over a billion animals have perished, Thousands of hectares of land have been burnt. It's massive. And almost brought down and may in the end bring down the Prime Minister Morrison. He's had the same change his tune. He can no longer deny the impact of climate on the environment. And what has really pushed these people forward is the central banks are now putting in their models. The uh, Blackstone... uh, Operation, the head there, Larry uh, Fish, announced that they would be factoring in a climate change for the businesses that they own or represent a very large fund over seven or eight trillion dollars. So, when you have those types of companies, uh, the quote unquote capitalists of the capitalists, going on the climate uh, bandwagon. The rest of the uh, little capitalists uh, will uh, follow, or they will be swallowed up like the little guffies in the stream, uh, period. So thus, when Trump goes to the uh, World Economic Forum, he'll have to come up with some different rhetoric. And will it matter what he does? Because the Federal uh, Federal Reserve in the U.S. will start factoring in uh, climate change, and so will the uh, central bank in the United Kingdom, the central bank in France, 
the central bank in uh, Germany, etc., and into the emerging markets. They will all be talking about uh, climate change. So that is a very big item. The other item we'll have uh, some coverage of uh, the uh, impeachment proceeding, which will start on Tuesday in the U.S., it will not be much of an event uh, follows some cookie-cutter pattern from uh, President Clinton's, uh, whereas the, each side will have, according to Leader McConnell, 24 hours uh, to present their case. And they will be presenting their case in uh, 12-hour sessions, run roughly from 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Till they're finished in the early morning around uh, 1 a.m. or whatever. There obviously will be breaks. And they each side will get to call their witnesses in those two 12-hour sessions. And if the clock is right, they will uh, finish up roughly within uh, two days. So in other words, uh, you'll have Tuesday, uh, which is more of a perfunctory day. And when they actually start uh, calling the witnesses... Uh, by Friday, the witness phase uh, should be uh, Thursday, whatever. The witness phase should be uh, exhausted. And then you will have a debate on whether or not, uh, I should say the presentation uh, stage, not the witness stage. They'll have a debate on whether or not to have witnesses at all. They may or may not have witnesses. We don't know at this point in time. But basically, it'll be a situation where many people, of course, will be at work at 1 p.m. In the east, it'll be in the morning in the west, uh, if you look at the various types of uh, time zones. Will there be a lot of information out of this? Uh, Probably not. It'll be a rehash. Uh, we'll, We'll do a program at least on the uh, initial uh, offerings and the answers as uh, such, the briefs. In other words, what constitutes an an impeachable offense? And there are two articles of impeachment that will be very important. But what is more important is the numbers. You need 67 senators to evict, or convict, excuse me, not evict, well, you would be evicting, but anyway, to actually impeach uh, D.J. Trump. As things stand now, that will not happen. Now, things can change, quite obviously. New evidence uh, could uh, pop up, and uh, it would be up to the uh, Senate, uh, which is dominated by the Republicans, if they would uh, take the new evidence up. They could say, no, we're not taking this new evidence up, and that would be the end of that. The Republicans basically want to convene this thing and the quicker they get it shut down it's the old classic uh, episode the longer you leave any event out there the more damage it causes an example was the row between uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren over whether or not uh, Bernie said uh, a woman could win in the presidential contest he elaborated on that on a New Hampshire uh, public uh, radio, I believe it was New Hampshire public radio in New Hampshire, about what he was talking about in terms of gender as a liability. Yes, age, his age, 78, is a liability, and that has been uh, confirmed. Uh, the New York Times endorsed uh, Elizabeth Warren, the uh, senator from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and also... Uh, the Senator Amy Klobuchar, the senior senator from Minnesota. And we'll get to that in a minute. Their endorsement of these uh, two women in the Democratic uh, primary, who it will affect, who and whom it will perhaps have adverse uh, position on. Now, one thing it does, in fact, do is uh, it uh, spotlights corporate media and the liberals in particular, their affinity for Elizabeth Warren. Period. Those are some of the things some of the Bernie uh, supporters are saying. Let me get to this and we'll just kind of uh, uh, in a break with the uh, convention, uh, the editorial board has chosen to endorse two separate Democratic candidates for president. They've not done this before. They endorsed Hillary Clinton 
and Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren, the Democrats' best choices for president by the editorial board. That's on the 19th of January. American voters must uh, choose between uh, three uh, sharply diverse visions of the future. The incumbent president, uh, D.J. Trump, is clear about where he is uh, guiding the Republican Party. What they call white nativism at home and America first unilateralism of abroad. Brazen corruption, uh, escape uh, culture. World wars, a uh, judiciary stuck with ideology. And uh, the uh, and the A is in the way here. Uh, the past and with uh, Harry, Harry Arch in American society that was defined and unchallenged hierarchy. On the Democratic side, the central debate is on the way between two visions that may define the future of the party and perhaps the nation. Some in the party view D.J. Trump as an admiration and admiration and believe that a return to more sensible America is possible. Then there are those who believe that uh, President Trump was a product of the political economic system so rotten that they must uh, uh, replace it. The Democratic primary contest is often portrayed as a as a uh, tussle between moderates and progressives. To some extent, that is true. But when we spent significant time with the leading candidates, the similarities of their platform on fundamental issues became nearly any of them would be the most progressive president in decades on issues like health care, the environment, and government allocation of resources. Where they differ most significantly is not what but how in whether they believe the country's institutions and norms are up to the challenge of the moment. Many Democratic voters are concerned first and foremost about who can beat D.J. Trump. With a crowded field and with traditional polling in tatters, that uh, calculation calls for a healthy dose of uh, Humility about everyone's ability, of anyone's ability to uh, foretell what voters want. The Times found this out with their endorsement of Hillary Clinton. Choosing who will face off with uh, D.J. Uh, Trump also means acknowledging that Americans are being confronted with three models of how to govern this country, not two. Democrats must decide which of the two models would uh, be the most uh, compelling for the American people and best suited for repairing the republic. The party's largest and ruckus uh, feel has, uh, made, has made having that clear debate more difficult with focus on uh, personal characteristics, age, race, and experience, and a handful of the most contentious issues. Voters haven't benefited from uh, a clarifying uh, choice about the uh, party's message in the election and the approach to govern beyond it. It's a privilege for us on the editorial board to spend more than a dozen hours talking to candidates, asking them any questions that came to mind, yet the exercise is impossible for most Americans, and we are left uh, wanting for a more uh, focused conversation with the public. Now it's time to narrow the race. The history of the electoral board uh, would suggest that we would uh, side uh, squarely with the candidate with the more traditional approach to pushing the nation forward, within the realities of, of a constitutional framework and multiple party country. But the events of the past few years have shaken the confidence of, of even the most committed institutionalists. We are not veering away from uh, the values we espouse, but we are rattled by the weaknesses of the institutions that we trust to uh, under uh, guide those uh, principles. There are legitimate questions about whether our democratic system is fundamentally broken. Our elections are getting less free and less fair. Congress and the courts are increasingly partisan. Foreign nations are flooding a society with misinformation. A deluge of money flows through our parties. And the economic mobility that uh, made the American dream possible is vanishing. But radical and realistic uh, models are warrant serious consideration. If there were ever a time to be open to new ideas, it's now. 
if there's ever a time to seek uh, stability, now it is. That is why we're endorsing the most effective advocates of this uh, approach. They are Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar. At the dawn of 2020, uh, some of the most compelling ideas are not emerging from the center, but from the right wing of the, excuse me, the left wing of the uh, Republican Party. This is a testament to the uh, effectiveness of the case that Bernie Sanders and uh, Senator Warren have made about what ails the country. We worry about the ideological uh, rigidity and overreaching, and we uh, certainly push back on specific policies like uh, nationalizing health insurance or uh, discriminating uh, the borders, uh, decriminalizing the the borders. Uh, They're just discriminating. But anyway, we're also uh, struck by how much more effectively their message have matched the moment. Senator Sanders has spent nearly four decades, 40 years, advocating revolutionary change for a nation whose politics often move in a glacier slowness. A career spent uh, adjacent to the Democratic Party, but not as a part of it, has allowed him uh, to uh, lever uh, treacherous uh, criticism of a, a, a political party that often caters more to rich donors than to the middle class. Many of his ideas are once laid, laid, labeled radical, like uh, paid family leave, a, a higher minimum wage, universal health care, and limits on military inve- uh, intervention, are now mainstream and attract many voters who help elect D.J. Trump. Mr. Sanders would be 79 when he assumes office, and after the November, October heart attack, his health is a serious concern. Then there's uh, how uh, Mr. Sanders approaches politics. He boasts that compromise is uh, an an anaphenium to him, anaphetic to him. Often his uh, prescriptions could be the right ones, even though most are uh, openly rigid, uh, untested, and divisive. He promises that once in office, the groundswell of support will emerge to push through his agenda. For years in the Trump administration, we've seen little advantage to exchanging one over-promising divisive figure in Washington for another. Good news then that uh, Elizabeth Warren has uh, emerged as a standard bearer for the uh, Democratic left. That's debatable. Senator Warren is a gifted storyteller. She speaks eloquently of how the economic system is rigged against all but the wealthiest Americans and our uh, chance to rewrite the rules of power in our country. She puts it in a speech last month in her hands uh, that the story has a passion and a uh, of a converted longtime Republican from Oklahoma and a middle class family, well it was a working class family, whose uh, work study uh, in uh, economic reality left her increasingly worried about the future of the country. The word rig feels uh, less bombastic then are rooted in an informal assessment of what the nation needs to do to reassert its historic ideas like fairness, generosity, and equality. She's also committed to reforming the fundamental structure of government and the economy. Her first commitment is to any uh, corruption legislation. This is not only urgently needed, but also has the potential to find bipartisan support. She speaks fluently about a uh, about foreign policy that includes that in, uh, including how to improve NATO relations, sometimes that uh, would be barely uh, needed after D.J. Trump leaves office. Her campaign uh, plans in general demonstrate a serious approach to policy making that uh, some of the other candidates lack. Elizabeth Warren accurately describes a lack of housing construction as a primary driver of the nation's uh, housing crisis, and she's proposed both increases in government funding for housing construction and changing regulatory policy to encourage local governments to allow more construction. She plans to sharply increase federal involvement in uh, clean energy research and to uh, wean the American economy from fossil fuels. She uh, has uh, described how she would reduce economic and political power of large corporations, give workers more the ability to uh, bargain collectively. She has proposed sweeping expansion of government support for Americans at every uh, stage of life, from universal uh, child care to free public colleges to expanded Social Security. 
At the same time, a conservative federal judiciary will almost as a significant a roadblock uh, for a progressive change. For Ms. Warren, that leaves it open to question. One she uh, was unwilling to wrestle with in our interviews, Ms. Warren has proposed to pay for expanded social safety net by imposing new tax on the wealthy. But uh, even if she uh, could pass such a bill for the Senate, the idea is constitutionally suspect and would uh, eventually be bogged down for years in the courts. A conservative judiciary could construct a uh, Warren uh, regulatory power, could a constraint, excuse me, and roll back uh, access to health care. Carrying out a progressive uh, agenda through new laws would be very hard for any Democratic president. In light, voters could consider what a Democratic president might accomplish without new legislation. In particular, uh, they would uh, focus on the president's wide-ranging powers to reshape American society through uh, the creative and enforcement of regulation. As an advisor to uh, President Barack Obama, Warren was the person most responsible for creating a new regulatory agency, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. In her interview with the editorial board, she demonstrated her uh, sophisticated understanding of the uh, different levels of power in the administration, particularly in use of regulation areas such as trade, antitrust, and environmental policy. When she first uh, arrived in Washington amidst the Recession, uh, Senator Warren distinguished herself as a citizen politician. She showed an admirable desire to shake up the entrapment of many, uh, entrapments of many uh, Washington interests in favor of pragmatic uh, power uh, problem solving on behalf of regular people. In her primary campaign, however, she has shown some questionable political instincts. She sometimes sounds like a candidate who uh, sees a universe of us versus them who in the general election would be uh, going up against a president who has already divided uh, uh, America into his own version of them and us. This has been the most obvious case uh, obvious in her case for Medicare for All where she has already had to soften her message. Well, that happens all the time. As voters have expressed their lack of support for a plan there are good and sound reasons for public health care options. Uh, countries all over the world uh, have demonstrated that. But Ms. Warren's version would require a winning over a step- skeptical public legislative, uh, legislative entrenched warfare to pass uh, bills in Congress. American capitalism is responsible for its shares of sins, but Warren often casts uh, the net uh, far too wide, placing the blame for a host of malaise from climate change to gun violence at the feet of the business community. That is correct. When the onus uh, is on the society as a whole, the nation needs a more a unifying plan. The uh, Senator talks about uh, bringing together Democrats, Republicans, and Independents behind her proposals. Warren's plan uh, path to nomination is challenging, but not hard to envision. The four front runners are uh, bunched together, uh, both in national polls and surveys and states holding the first votes. They're talking here about uh, Iowa and New Hampshire. There are plenty of progressives who are hungry for a change, but many harbor lingering concerns about a messenger as divisive as uh, Bernie Sanders. At the same time, some moderate Democrats uh, see Warren as someone who uh, sparks their uh, uh, sparks uh, to their concerns about inequality and corruption. The lack of a single powerful moderate voice in the Democratic race is a strong evidence of a divided party. Never mind the talented and honorable politicians who chose to uh, set this fight out and just stop to consider the talents who have went. They mentioned Cory Brooker, Carmela Harris, Steve Bullock, uh, and uh, Michael Bennett, Devon Patrick, and Jay Inslee. Those candidates who remain have a mixture of strengths and weaknesses, and they mention uh, Little Petey, a Harvard graduate, Rhodes Scholar, naval veteran who served in Afghanistan, the first seriously open gay uh, presidential candidate. His, uh, his uh, showing uh, in the lead in primaries that predicts a bright political future. We look forward to him working his way up. 
And then they mentioned Andrew Yang and uh, Michael Bloomberg. Few men have uh, given more time and experience to the conduct of public business than Joe Lunchbox Biden. The former uh, vice president commands the greatest fluency on foreign policy and a figure of great warmth and empathy. He's uh, prone to verbal uh, stumbles, yes, but social media have also made every uh, gap a crisis when it clearly is not. Biden maintains a lead in the national polls. His central pitch to voters is he can beat a D.J. Trump, and D.J. Trump believes this himself. And uh, uh, Vice President Biden is 77 years old. It's time for him to pass the torch to a new generation. Then the good news is that Amy Klobuchar has emerged as a standard bear for the Democratic center. Her version of uh, going beyond the incremental giving uh, the uh, polarization in Washington and beyond the best chance to enact a more progressive plan could be under a Klobuchar administration. The Senate for Minnesota is uh, the very definition of Midwestern charisma, grit, and uh, stocktivitis. Boy. Her lengthy tenure in the Senate and bipartisan credentials would make her a deal maker, a real one, and unifier for the wings of the party and perhaps the nation. She promises to put the nation on the path through huge investments in green infrastructure, legislation to lower admissions to achieve 100% carbon uh, net uh, zero emissions no later than uh, 2050. She pledges to cut childhood poverty in half in a century, 10 years, by expanding earning income and child care credit. She also wants to expand uh, food stamps, which is now called food su- uh, sufficiency, and overhaul housing policy and develop uh, fields uh, for additional uh, demand for uh, mental health uh, there. In addition to push uh, for a robust public option in health care, something was coming down to Obamacare. The Democrats sold out free uh, community college in the federal minimum wage of $15. Senator Klobuchar speaks about issues like climate change and area of middle class uh, gun safety and trade uh, with an infamy that connects to voters lived experiences especially in the middle of the country. She talks often with self uh, deprecating humor. Well, that's not a thing. And of her uncle Dick's deer stand, her Father struggled with alcoholism and a Christian faith. I didn't know she was a Bible thumper. She promises a foreign policy based on uh, leading by experience instead of one uh, by uh, fret via Twitter. As a member of the Judiciary Committee, she serves on the subcommittee responsible for oversight of the Justice Department. In 13 years as a senator, she sponsored and voted on a dozen national defense uh, measures, including military action in uh, Libya and Syria. Not her best vote she's taken there. That is Wilsonian foreign policy. Her record uh, shows that she is competent and thoughtful and reacts to data. Well, we hope everybody would do that. All have helped uh, Ms. Uh, Klobuchar uh, be one of the most productive senators amongst the Democratic uh, field in terms of bills passed with bipartisan support, according to a recent study from the Center for Effective Lawmaking. When she arrived in the Senate, that was in 2007, she was part of a bipartisan group of lawmakers that proposed comprehensive immigration uh, reform, including a path to citizenship for 12 million undocumented uh, immigrants. Before conservative pundits made it a political poison, her most recent legislative accomplishments are narrow uh, but uh, meaningful to those affected, especially legislation aimed at helping... uh, Crime victims, well, she's a former prosecutor in the most populous uh, county in uh, Minnesota. Reports of how uh, Senator Klobuchar uh, treats his staff gave us pause. They raised serious questions about her ability to attract and hire talented people. You can forget about that. That's all been solved. Uh, Klobuchar acknowledged that she's a tough boss and pledged to do better. To be fair, Bill Clinton and D.J. Trump, not to mention former V.P. Biden, have also had reputations for sometimes berating their staffs and is rarely mentioned in the, as a public liability. 
In 2016, Hillary Clinton carried nine of Minnesota's 87 counties. Klobuchar carried 51 in uh, 2018. And it's far too early to count uh, Ms. Klobuchar out. Senator Kerry, the eventual uh, Democratic nominee, Brother Kerry, in 2004, was also polling in the single digits at this point in the race, but he did emerge. There's been a wildfire in Australia, larger than Switzerland. The Mideast is more unstable at this moment than at any time in the past decade. A basket case governments in several nations south of the uh, Rio Grande have uh, sent historic floods of immigrants to the southern border. Global technology companies extract more political influence than some national governments. White nationals from Norway to New Zealand to El Paso use the Internet to share ideas about racial uh, superiority and which cabal of rifle, uh, cow, excuse me, of rifles cabal also uh, the best interest of the next uh, mass uh, killer. The next president will shape the direction of American prosperity and the future of the globe. Well, that sounds more like American exceptionalism there. The current president, uh, meanwhile, is a threat to democracy. He has uh, emerged from... Uh, Strong arming uh, Ukraine and to tampering with the 2020 election. Yet the Trump maintains a near universal approval from his party, and with nearly a certainty, uh, coast to nomination Democrats would be smart to recognize that his vision of America's future is shared by many million Americans. Any hope of restoring unity in the country will be will require modest a willingness to compromise support of many demographics that make up the Democratic uh, coalition. The young, the old in red states, the blue, the black and brown and white for Senator Klobuchar that acknowledging uh, the death of the nation's dysfunction. For Senator Warren, it's understanding that the country is more diverse than her base. There will be dissatisfaction that, uh, th- that those dissatisfied but this page is not throwing its weight behind a single candidate, favoring a centrist or progressive, but is a fight the party itself has been inching to since uh, the defeat of Hillary Clinton in uh, 2016, one that would be uh, should be played out in the public arena and in the privacy of the voting booth. The very purpose of the primaries is to uh, test market strategy and ideas that dramatize and inspire the country. Ms. Klobuchar and Ms. Warren right now are the Democrats best equipped to lead that debate. May the best woman win. Well, this is a very interesting situation as to how they are addressing uh, the fight ahead in terms of the progressive and the liberal center of what they call the middle of the Democratic Party. Now and at the same time, this has effects on uh, some of the candidates. Liz Warren will be more seen as liberal stand-in and the backing of corporate media, such as the uh, New York Times does not help her in the progressive community and the struggle to distinguish herself in that community. So, will uh, her polling increase? Well, perhaps some fundraising will increase. The polling is a suspect. Now, as to Amy Klobuchar, it's a different case there. This uh, will give her additional name recognition. We'll bring funds into her campaign that would have not otherwise reached the coffers. We'll allow her to go into March 3rd uh, primary, the Super uh, Tuesday, in much better shape financially and in much better shape nationally. Does a Times uh, endorsement mean what it meant uh, 30 years ago or any newspaper? No, but the Times does have a dedicated uh, leadership. Uh, readership. I've been reading it since the 50s, and uh, many of us now read it uh, online. So we read it, the Post and various others, and even the, the Wall Street Journal and the editorial thing, but again, they have a much more conservative uh, policy. But if you recall, in 2016, uh, newspapers that had never endorsed a Democrat in modern history, since probably LBJ, 
the Dallas Morning News endorsed Hillary Clinton. So you are seeing uh, things open up even in red states like uh, Texas. So it is a new age. The uh, parties are changing. Some of the old political models are still here, like Iowa, which is a state that is primarily European, and New Hampshire. This is from the days of Jim Crow. They were running the program of those uh, primaries and through the 50s when most African Americans uh, in the South could not vote until the Civil Rights Act and the man that we remember today, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., started his uh, campaign in uh, Birmingham. And many, many unsung uh, heroes in the African American community and the wider European community worked uh, on behalf of civil rights. And one person can never be forgotten in the struggle for uh, civil rights is the man from Texas, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who without uh, President Johnson, there would have not been the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Fair Housing Act, a period, the Medicare, much of the progressive legislation that is now there, that D.J. Trump and his gang are trying to limit on, uh, were uh, created on his administration. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency was created on the Tricky Dicky. Now, Tricky Dick did pass some uh, progressive legislation. There's no doubt about that. But then there was a long drought. Came President Carter, Georgia, and he was a moderate Democrat at the uh, at the helm. And then there was Reagan, the reactionary that set us back 20 years or more, eight years of him. And then uh, the President George H. W. Bush, known as the first President Bush. And then came Bill Clinton out of Little Rock, Arkansas, suburb of Hope. Anyway, uh, Bill Clinton was there for eight years and modernized the nation. Unfortunately, his uh, his uh, centrist uh, program um, brought about more and more deregulation and where the nation is now, period. He was the father of so-called welfare reform way before uh, D.J. Trump ever uh, set forth on the uh, national scene of D.J. Trump did rally around the Central Park of Five uh, some African American men and men of color that were convicted of a crime they did not commit so this stuff did just the uh, ple- present atmosphere did not start it started with the seven strategy which they have to deal with at this point in time the Times uh, gave an endorsement uh, that is the corporate media's look hoping that one of these candidates will emerge. But there's a lot of twists and turns between the Iowa caucuses and New Hampshire primary. It moves on to states that are more representative, like Nevada, and then on to uh, South Carolina, where uh, the Democratic Party in South Carolina is the party of African Americans, followers of O.J. Simpson. There were a number of Democrats that were in uh, South Carolina on Monday, including uh, Senator uh, Klobuchar, uh, Warren, and even Little Petey, but Little Petey didn't speak. Little Petey is uh, is petering out, as one would say. He How it will affect him? Well, many people that probably went to Little Petey will now move to uh, Senator uh, Klobuchar. Uh, there, without some of his reactionary uh, policies, uh, his entrance and exit, as one person put it, little Petey uh, car will uh, get uh, derailed, particularly in a Super uh, Tuesday where he's in the single digits. Will Elizabeth Warren be able? Elizabeth Warren will uh, Senator Klobuchar be able to escape Iowa out of the fifth uh, place that she's in now by many of the polls? We think that's a very real uh, possibility that she could rise to third or fourth behind uh, Bernie Sanders and Liz Warren. And a lot of that will depend on where Little Petey is, that people see that Little Petey is basically done, as he is done with being a mayor, Petey. So if him out of the way and where uh, Vice President Biden will fall, that would be very interesting. Will he fall into fifth place coming out of I would not be there. But would that affect his uh, campaign? Uh, no. In New Hampshire, he doesn't expect to finish as high. But then he has uh, his mocks as he goes on to Nevada. States more open to him 
and into South Carolina where he's still leading. Uh, so we'll see how all of that works out. So this is kind of the situation here uh, with those uh, people uh, there and where the New York Times has decided to put itself. So we see this uh, occurring here. Let me just pull out. We already covered the Women's March. That was uh, over the weekend. We covered it on the week that was, so we'll not go back to it out of Los Angeles. We try to evenly distribute things as uh, best uh, we can uh, here. And we've now moved past uh, Virginia uh, and the destructive elements uh, there in the state of Virginia. Excuse me, in the state of Virginia. And uh, we'll see if we can, uh, if we have some polling here. I, I know we have some polling. Uh, the uh, crisis in the national, uh, in uh, Major League Baseball has been a crisis. People have been uh, fired. A.J. Hinch, uh, the Houston manager, was uh, fired. And the uh, manager of the Boston uh, Red Sox, Mr. Cora, has been removed. And uh, the manager of the Mets coming in has also been removed from there. And this is from the Washington Post. To find a large chunk of Major League Baseball's cheaters look beyond uh, the uh, Houston Astros and Red Sox. They're seemingly on every field in every uh, M, uh, MLB uh, game. And they're not in the batter's box or the uh, dugout. They're on the mound. Pitchers have broken baseball rules in plain sight. Since the game's inception, there's no doubt about that. Even Babe Ruth stole signs. Experts say most players are fine with that, or at least uh, don't want to uh, rattle their own, rattle their own teams. Said Bob uh, Fryman, an NBA and ESPN analyst known on Twitter as uh, the Pitching Ninja. Pitchers definitely cheat. Do it mostly by applying what. NLB's rule books described as foreign substances. Such substances include spit, mud, pine tar, and other lubricants. If you remember, Gaylord Perry used to be famous for throwing for the spitter, which uh, allows a pitcher to manipulate the ball in unnatural ways uh, using sandpaper. Also, pitchers sometimes and you get to scuff the ball with a concealed object, such as emery board sandpaper, to create such effect. That's also outlawed by the rule book. That hasn't stopped the uh, pitchers from using these methods to gain an illicit edge. Even in uh, the era of the game, when spitballs are out of style, pitchers still routinely apply the lava to the ball or, the, or uh, their gloves so the ball will fly out of their hands. Fryman says in a telephone interview for a pitcher to... Uh, Sneak a couple of uh, fingers uh, worth of pine tar beneath uh, the brim of his uh, cap or a spot on his forearm. Around 6% of big league pitchers use some type of foreign substance on the mound. That's an estimate from Mr. Fryman there. Reference his conversation over the years with uh, Major League Baseball players. All of them uh, substances are utilized to alter the pitching uh, pitcher's natural spin rate. So they're the old tried and true uh, if you can't caught by an empire a pitcher would immediately be reject, uh, rejected from the game and subject to automatic 10 day uh, suspension. That used to not be the case. Some uh, games, uh, the best pitchers haven't uh, been shy about uh, trying these less legitimate uh, methods to gain advantage. Now when you're saying cheating, using a pine tar to help your curveball, stuff like that, things that are done in the game and accepted as part of the game. That's from Hall of Fame pitcher, none other than Nolan Ryan. That's what he said in 1993. So I wouldn't uh, sit here and tell you that no, I wouldn't do those things. I think pitching is the only position where you have to uh, use uh, from your nails to your uh, hair. That is uh, from uh, Pedro Martinez in uh, 2018, and, and you wonder why uh, your hair, if you have uh, a jerry curl, uh, sometimes when the ball is not feeling right, you rub the hair product there. 
for one, the tactic has been around so long it's endured uh, with so few consequences, particularly in the tradition. Ryan wrote in his uh, autobiography, Cheating Except in Baseball, so I participated, and he also threw at people too, deliberately. When it's really obvious, uh, Fryman has said, oops, uh, we'll do something about it, but uh, most... Uh, Mostly it's a wink and a wink and a nod and a nod. The umpires don't care. But some pitches uh, contend their use of foreign surface is nefarious. It's necessary. A common uh, gripe amongst pitches is the baseball, especially in the warm summer months when they play most of their games. It can get uh, sticky with sweat and difficult to grip. A little uh, pinch of pine tar that's uh, used on the bat. It's a kind of a pretty thing because if you asked any hitter, they would uh, rather us have control of the ball and able to hold on to it and not let it slip. That's from uh, the Phillies reliever Tommy Hunter in uh, 2015 while a member of the Baltimore Orioles. Orioles experienced uh, with uh, the uh, thicker uh, constant grip uh, prototype ball in the American Atlantic League over the summer. The ball has a sticky coating to help the pitcher grip it. Professional leagues uh, use a similar ball in Japan. Didn't know about this. But Major League Baseball uh, using a doctored ball with uh, noble intention in mind is still against the rule, even if uh, it's accepted as most of the game. Now, this was in the Washington Post. We thought we would get this article out here, specifically for the Monday morning quarterback. And we got it out here. This Major League Baseball in uh, Major League pitchers uh, cheat, but two, they use pine tar instead of trash cans. That's to the uh, events that happen in Houston, in Boston, and around the league. So, no doubt, people are uh, looking at that situation. And uh, let us roll along here. See, I think we spoke enough on those endorsements. And see uh, what we can get here in terms of uh, some of the polling here. We polling up. We have Survey USA here and uh, some of these polls. Let's get to real clear very quickly here. And we'll go over these polls. Starting with Emerson. Uh, poll, this is of Jersey uh, primary in New Jersey. Now, very close race. Don't hear much of Jersey. Emerson is across the street from the Common in Boston. The uh, players here, uh, Biden by three, Biden at 28, Bernie Sanders at 25, Warren at 15, Bloomberg at nine, Mia Peavy at six, Amy Klobuchar has four here, Mr. Yang has uh, six, that's in New Jersey. Now, that was on uh, Monday. Now that we go down here, to the National Race Survey USA, Biden is ahead by 11. He has 32 to 21 for Bernie Sanders, 14 uh, for Liz Warren, uh, Buttigieg in the single digits. Tied uh, with uh, Bloomberg, who's running a lot of ads nationally at 9-9, and Yang and Klobuchar and so forth and so on. Kelsey Gabbard has two. In uh, that particular poll, that was taken on Saturday. And in New Hampshire, this is... Uh, WHDH, uh, this is another Emerson poll there. Bernie's ahead by five there at uh, 23 in uh, New Hampshire. Joe Biden is at 14. Warren is at 14. Boone Judge at 18. Amy Klobuchar finally in the double digits at 10. She will be rising up there. Kelsey Gabbard uh, is at five. That's a, a very good position to be in. Mr. Yang at six. Tom Steyer at a four with all of his millions of dollars. Out in California, this is a Survey USA poll. Uh, uh, KGTV uh, and Survey USA has Biden up by 10. He's 30. Bernie is 20. Warren's also 20. Boone Judge is in the single digits at eight. And Bloomberg so far is at six. And Rasmussen had uh, DJ Trump at 49. Doesn't mean very much there. And if we go back uh, to Wednesday, uh, this is another national poll. This is by YouGov and The Economist. Uh, Biden is up by 7. He has 27. Bernie has 20. Liz Warren has 19. 
And Boone Judge falls back into the single digits with Bloomberg. He's seven. Amy Klobuchar out of Florida. We don't hear a lot of Florida. Uh, this is Florida Atlantic University. There, uh, Joe Biden is at 42. He's 26 points up. Then comes Bernie at 16. Warren at 10. Uh, Bloomberg at 7. Amy Klobuchar at 6. And Mia Peavy falls to 3. Out of Wisconsin, this is Marquette University out of Milwaukee. And they have Biden up by four. He is 23. Bernie Sanders has 19. Warren has 14. Boone Judge has 15. Uh, Bloomberg has six. Klobuchar has four. And then they do the matchups here uh, between DJ Trump and Biden. He's up by four. Bernie's up by one. Uh, Warren is behind DJ Trump by three. Uh, Boone Judge by two. That is in the state of Wisconsin. And Florida Atlantic, that is uh, in uh, Florida. Uh, they have uh, Joe Biden up by two over DJ Trump, 51 to 49. And Ernie and Bernie Sanders up by six, 53 to 47 over DJ Trump. And Warren up by two. Uh, little Petey is tied there. And then we're on to Michigan. Hadn't seen much polling out of Michigan. This is EPIC, uh, MRA, Michigan, has Biden up by six, Bernie Sanders up by five, uh, Liz Warren up by three, Boone Judge up by four, and Bloomberg up by seven, that is in the state of Michigan. And the NPR, um, their poll has DJ Trump at 42, uh, his approval, disapproval at 43, the IPSA poll has his approval rating 41, 56 disapproved. And uh, the Morning Consult has it at 43. YouGov at 46 is with DJ Trump. And let's see, the Democrats' this generic ballot um, from Political Morning Consult is up by 3. Uh, and the Wrong Direction is up by 18. And in YouGov it's up by 13. And in the Reuters, it's a poll. That's a very good one. We put it up on African Americans. Anyway, this is up by uh, 25. This is a general roundup of uh, the uh, polls as we uh, see those. So those numbers basically tell us that um, we're off to the races. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Iowa, the uh, Senators Warren, uh, Klobuchar, and uh, Bernie will be sitting in the Senate listening to virtually nothing. So they will be off until the weekend, and they will be back uh, wherever they will be. And that will sort of go on uh, through Iowa. Will it affect, excuse me, Iowa? Well, they have good organizations there, and the organizations uh, prove it. You probably will see more of the candidates uh, in the next couple of weeks make their final arguments in uh, Iowa. And start focusing more on New Hampshire and Nevada and uh, South Carolina as they move on and get ready for the big one, which will be uh, no doubt uh, the national race. We'll see more of that uh, here. Survey USA. I'm not certain uh, what we'll do with Survey USA. We have it here. We probably won't go into it uh, on this broadcast. We'll get it on some others. When we actually get the uh, legal positions out there, uh, period. <coughs> There's one from Reuters here that President Joe uh, Hopeful Bernie uh, renews his attacks on rival uh, Social Security record. This is of Joe Biden. Biden on uh, Saturday accused Sanders' campaign of misleading voters by sending out a selective excerpt taken from a speech where Biden discussed retirement and disability benefits. Sanders' campaign continues to uh, call attention to what it says is Biden's decade-long record of pushing measures that reduce funding to the program. Joe has talked about the need to cut Social Security, Biden said. That was in Concord, New Hampshire. Responding to the suggesting his campaign had taken Biden's comments out of context, uh, he said Biden's record as a whole shows Biden believes it's appropriate to cut Social Security, freeze cost of living adjustments, and regularly raise benefits. You can argue about one video, whether it was uh, 
full of uh, contact. But the real issue is Joe voting, if the memory is correct, for the balanced budget uh, amendment that was in 1995 that would have forced the administration to balance the federal budget. Biden campaign spokesman uh, Bates said the former vice president was a champion of Social Security and argued for its expansion. Sanders' criticism came as he campaigned this weekend. He was in New Hampshire, which holds its election on the 8th of February. Joe is a friend of mine. I like him, but there's nothing wrong with uh, talking about his record. His record on many issues, Iraq, trade, bankruptcy, Social Security, is different from my record. Biden on uh, Sunday sent an email to supporters uh, urging them to donate to his campaign and to defend against a barrage of negative attacks and lying about the story of my record from uh, the Sanders campaign. Well, you're going to see, you know, a lot of that out there. And there's no doubt Joe Biden has voted for a lot of things uh, under the broad umbrella of what Democrats de- uh, did in terms of balancing the uh, record, uh, period. So the age thing, uh, um, Sanders says being a woman, age could, uh, and age, and he talked about that, could have a problem. He said that in uh, Concord, New Hampshire. He's very, very clear about that. An interview with a uh, public radio in New Hampshire said that the media has blown this thing up and that he's always believed and believes today that a woman can be elected uh, president. I think everybody has their own set of problems. He added when asked about whether gender is an obstacle for uh, a female candidate, inciting him being uh, 78 years old, his own problem to overcome. He responded, uh, prompt a fresh round of online uh, comments. But gender, no doubt, is out there. Did gender hurt uh, Hillary Clinton? It did some, but uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, own uh, missteps, and uh, greater than her missteps, with voter suppression that kept her out of office. Not the Russians attacking the election, but clear old voter suppression. In places like Wisconsin, on the Boss Walker, in uh, Pennsylvania, on the Republican legislature there, in uh, North Carolina, under uh, Republicans there. And if you go in Michigan, under uh, Gateway Snyder, who is long gone, but he and the Republicans there suppressed the vote in Detroit. There's no doubt about that. And if you look at Michigan, you look at Wisconsin, and uh, you look at Pennsylvania, had uh, not for voter suppression, Hillary Clinton would be in the White House today. There's no doubt about that. And had she visited Wisconsin more, uh, she would have won Wisconsin, which would have changed up something. One of the uh, big problems is with these states, there is some linkage particularly there, uh, Pennsylvania was key, command and control state is a must win for Democrats as Republicans usually in Ohio. Barack Obama won Ohio two times by appealing uh, to working people and that has to be done. So don't be surprised when you see polls out of these states that other Democrats did not get and Bernie Sanders is ahead in those states like West Virginia. He does get the votes of working class America, which the corporate media likes to call the European America. Uh, there are many of the votes that Barack Obama got from the working class went to D.J. Trump based upon a promise to get jobs. And that will be a very big issue along with uh, climate change. The climate change will be coming up as much more an issue in this Green New Deal. As the uh, corporate uh, barons, the um, central banks, put it in their models and the um, black rocks of the world start to emphasize. In other words, if you don't cut your, far, your uh, carbon footprint to a, a company, we will cut you out of the pie. And as that happens, things change. Results uh, come out there. So this has been the Monday Morning Quarterback on the 20th of January, an extended version, 2020 Boston Red and Jerry Pippen broadcast booth here. And uh, we'll see you on some special coverage uh, through the week. And we get back at the desk. Uh, Spring term uh, starts and we take one or two classes at the uh, university. 
and we're also fighting uh, something. Not SARS related or anything like that, but uh, a a cold, or uh, I think we had the flu earlier there, and we got it while we were at the medical center. Anyway, that was over, but now we're coughing, not coughing as badly now. For a good day, and have a good